This video is on factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient other than one. There are many methods out there to do this. A lot of textbooks use guess and check. The method I like to use is called swing and divide. And really more appropriately, it's swing and divide and swing back because there's three steps. We're going to swing, divide, and swing back. So let's see what we're talking about here. Here I have my trinomial. My leading coefficient is not one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this seven over here and multiply it by that four. That's my swing part. Seven times four is 28. There's my swing. Then we're going to divide by what we swung. We swung a seven. Before I do that, let's, uh, let's go back when we're factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of one, this sign tells me both my signs are the same. This sign tells me they're both positive. So let's go ahead and write our x plus, our x plus Okay, we do have to figure out what numbers to put here and here. So I'm looking for two numbers whose product is 28 and sum is 29. The first two I try, one times 28 is 28, one plus 28 is 29. So my numbers are one and 28. So from here to here, we had to factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one. Now let's go back to swing and divide. We swung a seven over here. Now we're going to divide by what we swung. We swung a seven, so we're going to divide both of these numbers by seven. 28 divided by seven is four. One divided by seven is a decimal. So we're going to swing the seven back and put it right there. And my answer is seven X plus one times X plus four. If I fold this or distributed these two terms to these two terms, and simplified, I would end up with this. So in review, swing and divide. We swung our seven over and multiplied it by the third term. Then we had to factor the trinomial as normal. Then we divide by what we swung. We swung a seven, so I divided both of these constants by seven. Simplified it, 28 divided by seven is four. This one would not simplify, so I swung it back. The seven swung back and made 7x plus 1 times x plus 4. On example 2, again, I have a leading coefficient that is not 1 on my trinomial, so I'm going to swing this 3 over here and multiply it by 20. 3 times 20 is 60. I factor the trinomial as normal. This tells me my signs are going to be the same. This tells me they're both negative, so I write x minus and x minus. I'm looking for two numbers whose product is 60 and whose sum is negative 17. Since my sum is negative, I'm only going to use numbers where the bigger number is negative. So I know this won't work, but I'll go ahead and list 1 and negative 60. Sum is negative 59. 2 and negative 30. The sum is negative 28. 3 and negative 20, the sum is negative 17. There we are. That's the numbers we're looking for. And I just made a mistake. I am so sorry. I need both of my answers to be negative. So let me correct this. Both of my numbers have to be negative. So both of my numbers here have to be negative. So that's negative 61, negative 32, negative 23, and negative four times negative 15 is negative, is positive 60, but the sum is negative 19. Negative five times negative 12 is positive 60. When I add them, I get negative 17. So there's the answers I'm looking for. Negative five and negative 12. All right.
So I have factored this trinomial into x minus five, x minus 12. Now I'm going to go back to my swing and divide. I swung the three over. Now I'm going to divide by what I swung. I swung a three, so I'm going to divide both of these by three. 12 divided by three is four. Five divided by three is a decimal, so I'm going to swing this three back. And it goes there, three X minus five. And your answer is three X minus five times X minus four. I swung the three over, multiplied it by 20. I factored a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one to get X minus five times X minus 12. Then I went back to swing and divide. I swung, I divide by what I swung, which is a three. And if the three will not go into five, which it won't, I swing it back. All right, example three has some really big numbers. Anytime you're doing math, it's good to have a calculator. You need that from time to time. So the first thing you always look for, do I have a greatest common factor? I should have looked for that in every one of these. No greatest common factor here, no greatest common factor here, and no greatest common factor here. Always look for that first. So now I'm going to factor this trinomial using the swing and divide method. So I'm going to swing this 20 over, multiply it by 30. That's going to leave me with x squared plus 49x. Two times three is six, plus this zero plus this zero is 600. All right, now I'm going to factor this trinomial that has a leading coefficient of one. It's going to be x plus x plus this tells me they're the same. This tells me they're both positive. Now, when I'm finding two numbers whose product is 600 and whose sum is 49, I could have a really long list here. If I start at one times 600 and then add those together and get 601, two times 300, three times 200, four times 150, five times 120, six times 100, I would probably just skip on down to a nice even number I would know how to do which is 10 times 60 is 600, but their sum is 70. So let's skip to 20. 20 times 30 is 600, but the sum is 50. Man, that's close. I know 25 will go in there. Let's see, 25, may need a calculator. 600 divided by 25 is 24. That gives me 600 when I multiply and 49 when I add. So there's what I'm looking for, 25 and 24. Okay, I swung, now I divide by what I swung, I swung a 20, so I divide by 20. Now here's a situation that we didn't have before. I need to simplify these two fractions, so this first one's gonna become, let's see, five goes in there, five times over four. Simplify this one, Four goes in there six times over five. All right, I've simplified my fractions. I still am going to have mixed numbers or decimals because four won't go into five evenly, five won't go into six evenly, so I'm ready to swing back. So I swung the 20 over. I divided by what I swung. Always simplify your fractions, and now I'm swinging back. So this four swings back here and becomes four X plus five. The five swings back here and becomes five x plus six. And there's your answer, four x plus five times five x plus six. Okay, so we did one with large numbers. Now let's do one where something different happens. If I swing this five over here and multiply it by 30, I'm going to get the wrong answer because the first thing you always, always have to do when factoring is look for a greatest common factor. This has one. It's five. Five goes into all of these numbers. So when I factor out my five, I'm left with y squared plus five y plus six. You always have to factor out the greatest common factor first. Now I'm actually going to factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one. So I leave my five over here times and this tells me I'm going to have two signs the same. This tells me they're both positive. So it's going to be y plus times y plus. Two numbers 
who multiply together to give me six and add together to give me five will be two and three. And there's my answer, five times y plus two times y plus three. And I could put my y plus three here, my y plus two here, it doesn't matter. You'll get the wrong answer if you start swinging before you check, is there a greatest common factor? On my last example, I want you to mentally try to do it with me and think of what you would do in each step. So first thing, what is the first thing you would do? The first thing you would do is factor out the greatest common factor. These are all even numbers, so you know they have a common factor of two. And that also happens to be our greatest common factor. So let me factor out two. That leaves me with three X squared plus 11 X minus four. Now think about what the next thing you would do would be. I'm gonna let this two hang out. I'm gonna factor this trinomial by swinging and dividing. So I'm gonna swing the three over. It's gonna leave me with X squared plus 11X. Three times negative four is negative 12. Factor this trinomial. This tells me my signs will be different. So it's gonna be X plus X minus. Looking for two numbers whose product is negative 12, whose sum is 11. I'm only gonna use numbers where the bigger digit is positive because my sum is positive. And that's going to be, I think negative one times 12 is negative 12. But when you add them together, you get 11. So those are my numbers. So I put the negative one here, the positive 11 here. I factored that trinomial. Now I'm back to the swing and divide. I swung the three over. I think what's next? First thing that's next is me to write the correct number right here. That's a 12. All right, now the next thing to do, I swung, now I divide. I swung a three. So let's divide by three. Now think about what you would do next. Three goes into 12 four times. Three will not go into one, so I swing it back. And there is my answer. Now I could write it like this, or you may see it on a multiple choice written like this. Either way is correct. All right, you're on your own on this one. Give number one a try. On number one, I do not have a greatest common factor. My leading coefficient is not one. So swing in the bed. Swing the three over, that gives you x squared plus 17x plus 30. I need to factor that trinomial. It's going to be x plus x plus two numbers whose product is 30 and sum is 17. If you need to do your little chart over on the side, do it. But I know 15 times 2 is 30 and 15 plus 2 is 17. And of course, the 2 could go here, the 15 could go here. No, no difference. We swung the 3. So now let's divide by 3. 3 goes into 15 five times. 3 will not go into 2, so we swing it back. You get 3x plus 2. So that is your answer. Or on a multiple choice assessment, it could be written like this. It doesn't matter. You can multiply in any order you want. Try number two.
hint on number two. If your first step was not to factor out the greatest common factor of two, you need to check it. When you factor out a two, you're left with x squared plus 11x plus half of 56 is 28. Now you have a trinomial here. So it's going to be two times x plus x plus two numbers whose product is 28 and whose sum is 11. Let's see, seven times four is 28, seven plus four is 11. So let's do that four and seven or seven and four, doesn't matter. I swung a, I didn't swing anything. So this is my answer. Two times x plus four times x plus seven. And of course the x plus seven could be here, the x plus four could be there. There's your answer. Try number three. Number three does not have a greatest common factor. My leading coefficient is not one, so I'm ready to swing and divide. I'll swing the five over. That'll leave me with x squared plus 34x plus five times 24 is 120. This is going to be an x plus, x plus. Looking for two numbers whose product is 120, whose sum is 124. I'll start with 10 times 12. That gives me 22. 6 times 20 gives me 26. Two times 60, no. Three times 40. Let me think about this. Three times 40 is 120, but that's 43. Let's just go through them. Four times 30. Here it is. Four times 30 is 120, and they add together to give you 34. So four and 30. Okay. I swung a five, so now I divide by five. Five won't go into four, so I swing it back. I get 5x plus four. Five will go into 30 six times. So there's your answer, five X plus four times X plus six. The hardest part to me is when you have big numbers, figuring out two numbers whose product is this and whose sum is this. Oh man, you couldn't see my table. The toughest part is finding two numbers whose product is this and whose sum is this. I go through the table most of the time I can do it in my head, but sometimes a calculator will be healthy, uh, helpful for you. Number four. Well, number four, I have no greatest common factor, so I swing the two. Factor this trinomial, x plus, x plus, two numbers whose product is 48 and sum is 19. All right, 148, 224, 3 times 16, and that's it. 3 times 16 is 48, but the sum is 19. So 3 and 16. All right, swing and divide and swing back. I swung the 2. Now I divide by 2. 2 won't go into 3, so I swing it back. 2x plus 3 times x plus 2 goes into 16 eight times and there's your answer. 2x plus 3 times x plus 8. Try number 5. Number 5 are all even numbers so I know 2 will go in there. I'll check and see if a bigger number will. It won't. 2 is my greatest common factor. It's going to leave me with 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. Let my 2 hang out over here. 
Factor this trinomial, my leading coefficient's not one, so I'm gonna swing the two over. Two times five is 10. This is going to be an x plus x plus two numbers whose product is 10 and sum is 11 is one and 10. One times 10 is 10, one plus 10 is 11. I swung a two, so I'm going to divide by two. Two won't go into one, so I swing it back. Two times x is two x plus one. Uh, Two will go into 10 five times, so here's my answer. And I shouldn't have written that. I should have wrote it nice and close like this. Two times 2x two plus 1 times x plus 5. Number 6, let's try another one where we need our calculator skills. Number six, there is no greatest common factor. 41 is a prime number, so you are going to have to swing and divide. All right, let's swing to 12. 12 times 24. I will use my calculator. 24 times... 24 times 12 is 288. I'm going to have x plus and x plus. That tells me they're the same. That tells me they're both positive. Two numbers whose product is 288 and sum is 41. All right, I know 1 and 288 won't work. 2 and 144, that's not going to add together 41. Uh, skip the 4, 72, nope. Let's do all the even. 6 times 48, 6 plus 48, no. 8 times 36, that gives me 44. We're getting close. Let's try 9. Will 9 go in there? 288 divided by 9. It's 32, 32 plus nine is 41. We found the magic numbers, nine and 32. So now we're back to our swing and divide. We swung a 12, so now let's divide by 12. We need to simplify these fractions. Nine over 12 simplifies to three over four. That'll be 16 over six. 8 over 3. 4 won't go into 3, so we swing the 4 back. 4x plus 3. 3 won't go into 8, so we swing the 3 back. 3x plus 8. And that is our answer. Okay, let's do an easy one with small numbers to get our confidence up. Try number seven. Number seven, no greatest common factor. Swing the two. Two times negative one is negative two. This is gonna be an N plus and an N minus. That tells me my signs are different. Uh, I want my bigger number to be negative, so 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, so my numbers are positive 1 and negative 2. I swung a 2, so let's divide by 2. 2 will not go into 1, so we swing that 2 back and get 2n plus 1. 2 will go into 2 one time. Our answer is 2n plus 1 times n minus one. Let me show you one more example just in case you run into this and then we'll be done. Here I have a trinomial, no greatest common factor, leading coefficient's not one, so I'm going to swing the four over. Four times seven is 28. This tells me my signs will be the same. This tells me they're both negative, so I go x minus 
x minus, looking for two numbers whose product is 28, whose sum is negative five, and both of those numbers will be negative. Negative one times negative 28, that doesn't work. Negative two times negative 14, that doesn't work. Three will not go into 28 because three won't go into the sum of the digits. Two plus eight is 10, so let's go to four. Negative four times negative seven is 28, but when you add them, you get negative 11. Five won't go in there, six won't go in there, seven will, but now I'm back to right where I was. These are all the factors of 28, none of them work. So every once in a while, you'll get one that can't be factored. It is a prime polynomial. If you find one that absolutely will not factor, the answer is prime. Please don't make the mistake of you can't figure out how to factor it. So you put prime. Most of them are not prime. But if you've done every option available, it doesn't work. The answer is prime. Thank you.